Okay. Hey there, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop once again. George and I are here, and our guest tonight is Elaine Clark. Say hello, Elaine. Hello. All right, we're going to talk about all sorts of cool stuff with the voiceover business and coaching and teaching and what you guys need to know as voice actors that you thought you knew, but there's more because you don't know what you don't know. Anyway, and we got all sorts of other cool stuff to talk about. Right, George? We certainly do. We hope that you know more than you know that you don't know after the show. What else can we say? Anybody Time want to analyze what I just said? Because yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> But that's what the show is about. Anyway, voiceover <laughs> body shop coming up right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Hey there, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. BS. And lots of it. Well, it's good to have you with us uh, right now because we've got a great guest tonight. Plus, if you've got a question for George and I, or for our guest, throw it in the chat room. I know Jeff Holman is sitting in there with his quill pen, ready to write it down to make sure that we get the questions and you get them, we get them to your, our guest. And You got that new carrier pigeon uh, landing bay, right? That's so right. So he writes them down. It, it, they, they just they drop through the ceiling in here gotcha. and, and, and we get those. Good, good. Yes. Well, this COVID-19 thing continues on. And at least we have Sue back in the studio now. You're still, yeah, you're, you're still yeah, hiding yeah. there up in Topanga. And uh, I miss having everybody around here and staring into an empty couch. But it is what it is, as somebody once said. Um, but anyway, uh, what else we got going on today? We got Tech Talk a little bit later on and your questions. And it's time to introduce our guest. And our guest is none other than Elaine Clark, uh, author of There's Money Where Your Mouth Is. Uh, it's in its fourth edition. She also has a new book coming out in October called Voiceovers for Podcasting. She is an actor, voice actor, coach, instructor, but not a floor wax. Let's welcome. Author and engineer. <laughs> and engineer. <laughs> Let's welcome Elaine Clark. Hello, Elaine. Hi. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy. It's been a while since you've been on our show. It has been. I think it was years. back back when in EWABS. Did we actually look back, George, and how long was I, that? You know what? <laughs> I couldn't wow. figure it out when you were on last. I'm embarrassed. I was looking, but it's been that long. And, I and had up, less wrinkles. Yeah. 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 <laughs> in other words, it's been too long. So welcome back to the show. Yeah. Uh, now, tell us a little bit about yourself, since the people who watched this thing, you know, nine years ago, uh, can get a refresher about how you got into voiceover and, and what your background is. Well, I have a long and sordid background that started as a theater major, moved to San Francisco. I wasn't making much money 
and theater. So I saw a little ad about how to do voiceovers. I fell in love, put together my reel, R-E-E-L, and uh, started marketing around to different production companies and advertising agencies, started getting work. Then I was also a media buyer at an advertising agency. So I started telling some of the, um, the people at the different radio and TV stations that I would also could write copy. So I would then get some of their clients. I would write copy and produce it and sort of went from there. And it was also kind of interesting because the Bay Area was a small market at the time. And then a guy named Hal Reine moved to town and he then hired a lot of really good people. Um, and it built into a quite, quite a good sized market. And then we had Silicon Valley took off. So we had lots of uh, corporate narration work. And then uh, the video game industry started in the Bay Area and that, that had lots of work there. So we sort of grew with it as also with the voicemail system started in the Bay Area. So with a lot of this technology, I was there at the, uh, the beginning years of it sort of growing, which is also kind of a thing that's, that's interesting because um, having the time in between from one project to the next as the years go on is nice rather than now you have to kind of know everything all at once. But it was a time when things were evolving and growing. So as I got one skill down, I could add another skill and I could add another skill. And then I was writing and producing and, and directing projects, lots of video games, lots of corporate narration. I've been doing e-learning for probably 20 years. And it's, uh, and then I'm working on um, uh, speech to text and uh, AI projects. It's just lots of, of different things. So every time I think I got a handle on it, something new happens. And I've worked on probably like 200 toys. So I have a pretty broad range from both being on the inside of the booth where I'm that talent and I'm being the outside of the booth where I'm a director and also where I'm an engineer. So I have a pretty full plate of information that I have to share with people. That's it? <laughs> That's all? That's it. I, I, I think there's a great tale in there of the fact that you have to have you have to wear a lot of hats in our business. There's, you know, it's not just reading copy. I mean, there's lots of different things. So you you gave a, a good long laundry list of things that you're able to do. Do you bring that into into your everyday voiceover practice? And do other people I, need to I do, do that? I do, and that's also what uh, when I first started, we were since we were reel to reel, and it was very hard mm -hmm. to roll the tape back and do it mm -hmm. again. Yeah. We were really trained on how to do it effectively without uh, mouth sounds and pops and and added breaths because cutting that out with a razor blade was really, really difficult. And if it was a union project, they had, you know, like a team of people there. And if you missed it, they go, actor missed it, roll back, roll back, roll back, roll back. And it was just painful to listen to. Oof. So you learned how to be efficient. So one of the things that I think it helped me as a coach is, is that during this process, you know, you would hit something, they go, wow, that was really good. And you're like, how did I get there? And so I had to keep figuring out what was it that happened? So because I love like patterns and figuring things out, I started figuring out the different patterns and how to put it in the body and how to, to be able to interpret the, the um, direction physically rather than just intellectually. And that's huge and emotionally because there's a big skip from that information to what we have to do. Absolutely. You know, it, really, the, technologically, what we do today is, you know, I mean, compared to what you and I used to do, it's like drawing with crayons. Mm -hmm. uh, if you learn how to do it on reel to reel and, you know, match, you know, get the sound right on the tape head and take a grease pencil and then take the tape, cut it out, put it in the block and all that stuff. If you learn how to do that, it was, you know, it, you learned editing theory. You knew that, okay, this, I learned it how to, on doing uh, 16 millimeter film. So, you know, it's like, take this piece, make sure that it's the right way. And, and I started learning, and I learned how to edit from there. So when you learn how to edit tape, I did the same thing. But now it's like, oh, take this, put it here, put that over here. And there's nothing to it. Mm -hmm. But... And and well, and the other thing that I think has been really helpful to me, I was trying to decide whether to be a musician or a theater major. Yeah. And because I played trumpet, my mother didn't want me to be deformed because I had this round circle on my lips. <laughs> <laughs> so she was really happy that I was going to be an actor instead, which that doesn't always happen, I have to tell you. So, uh, but the music music background that I have from playing the piano or playing, playing brass instruments was... Um, 
was really good at finding the downbeat and thinking in terms of measures. So that's where, like when I created my app, uh, adding melody to your voice, it's really teaching people how they've worked out the measures of the tune based on the words that are there. So even if, uh, if you have words like COVID, bump bump, so, or you have help, that's a whole note. <laughs> so you have different, different rhythms that need to match up so that a lot of people get their story, their rhythm off, which makes it really hard to add music to it. They have to cut it and move it apart. But once you know that they're balanced, then you have something really special. Hmm. It's an in, now, you wrote a book about, is that in your, in the book? It's what? in the book. Yeah. And then I create, uh, then I have a video uh, of adding melody to your voice. It has a 16 minute video and then exercises that you can record and practice with. And that's where, you know, like whether it's a dot, it's like a flick of the, the finger or a wiggle wobble, which is jazz hands to give it a shake or whether you're stretching something out, how you can just do it physically. So when they're giving you direction, your body does the work rather than your brain, because if the brain does the work, it takes you 20 takes to get there. If your body does the work, it can take it, you can get it done in one to two takes. Wow. Yeah. So this is part of just being efficient that we learned. Yeah, it's, over a course of time. Yeah, really. I think one of the problems a lot of people have is they can't get out of their own head when they're reading copy. It's like, I, I got to make it sound right. I got to do this. Really, it should be a little bit more organic, shouldn't it? Well, this is where I, I was working with someone today. I, I am opposed to the opening sentence before a script for this reason. I think the concept is correct. But too many people, and I was one of those, started being a copywriter and giving the perfect sentence. And the purpose of that opening line is to get you emotionally involved. So if I go, you need to hear this, I'm not emotionally involved. I'm getting ready to read a script. But if I go, oh, okay, here's the beginning of this script. Then I've emotionally changed how I'm approaching it. So this is where um, we have to all figure out what works for us. What works for one person may not work for the next person. Yeah. So I just found that I went in my head when I did it, but it's correct. Yeah. So, I mean, so what's, what's a good way to start? I mean, so I know a lot of people go, you know, and then, so they get into but a conversational tone. The reason why you're talking to someone, the reason why you're doing that lead in is to open yourself up emotionally. If you're doing in it, doing it intellectually because it's correct, it doesn't work. Interesting. So I just find if you, if I just roll my eyes and go, really? And then talk, it's giving me a start, but I'm not rewriting the copy. But if I go, is that really what you're going to do? And then I start reading it. It sounds canned. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can't do it that way. I understand the concept, but it doesn't work for me because my, the left side of my brain takes hold of it and just makes it very logical. And I'm trying to open up my emotions. Interesting to know. If you're just joining us, our guest is Elaine Clark. She is a voice voiceover coach, voice actor and all sorts of other things, along with being an author. And we'll talk about uh, her book, uh, uh, There's Money Where Your Mouth Is, and a new book you've got coming out uh, called uh, about podcasting, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, so people really need to realize that there are a lot of different things they need to do in voiceover. Now, when you're teaching people, and I, I know you, you like working with people who are a little bit more advanced, uh, what do you teach them about the business of voiceover and really that it's not like get an agent, I'll be doing commercials and I'll be making a million dollars, which seems to be the, the prevailing attitude with a lot of people. No, it's something that you have to do because your body tells you to do it. You are so, if you didn't do it, you wouldn't feel, feel fulfilled because this is not a logical business. <laughs> Hell so yeah. any, any form of performance <laughs> is really not logical. So uh, that's why parents, like I say, be a doctor, be a lawyer, do all those other things that make logical sense, be an engineer. So let's say be an actor, there's, you know, we're employed and then we're unemployed, you know, within, within an hour or minutes of, of one another. So um, what, I, what I do is just say how, this is how long I think it'll take you to get there. These are the things you need to do. This is what you need to do in order to get to that final step. And then I have to also figure out who can handle how much at one time. A lot of people like to com compartmentalize. I just want to work on my acting skills for right now. Then I'll work on my, my technology and how to do the recording. 
then I'll work on my marketing. And there are other people who want to do everything across the board. Some want to, some want to work on just commercials. Some want to work on, on characters for video games, but not animation. Some want to just work on animation. You know, it's, it, it's how our brains can hold it. And that's what a coach has to decide. How much can you hold on to at this moment of time? And how fast do you want to get there? And is that speed going to be in your way? Or is it going to be a motivator for you moving forward? Yeah. Because if you're doing it out of fear, I have to do this because I've lost my job. You're not going to succeed. You really? have to do it because if to not do it, it just doesn't feel right. You know that something in your life is missing because it's once again, not logical. Right. And of course you don't want to be able to, you know, when you're throwing information out there, sometimes some people describe it as, well, you're, you're like firing a fire hose into my mouth with all this information and it's too much. And you know, I, it, you really have to break it down because there are so many different parts to what we do as voice actors. It's not just the voice acting. That's the most important thing, mm -hmm. you know, that you, you know, you learn to, you know, that you're, you're, you're not talking to a thousand people at once. Literally, you're, you're having more of a one-to-one -one conversation depending on the copy. And that, uh, you know, that's just one part of it because there's the engineering part, which why they talk to George and I. Um, and there's the part where you've got to be a business person. I think a lot of people tend to forget that. Well, I think they also blend it all together during the performance. Right. So when you're performing, well, first of all, before you go, you get your level set, you get the studio set up, you get everything going technically, so you don't have to think about it anymore. Then you, uh, then you, can you have to connect with your emotions and with your and the reason why you're talking. I always ask, why was it written? What problem am I solving? And what is my job? What kind of, how am I motivating them to take action or to feel a certain way? That's my job. And then once I figure that out, I know whether I need to get energized or calm down or more, you know, be more intimate or be a little bit more flirtatious or whatever it is that it's called for. So um, anyway, there are just a lot of different ways that we have to, to look at the business. And when, then when we finish, recording it then we get to have a put our ears on and become the producer so we go okay now i need to see what i need to strip out or add or take out the breast so one of the things that i do and i'm really this is one of my coaching things is how to use the body so that you don't have as much editing to do so if you talk on the breath if you use gestures instead of mouth close and breasts that are unnecessary you have less to edit but you have to connect with that motion, uh, that emotion. You have to ride that breath. You also have to find out when those those transitions and, and uh, beats change, so that uh, when a new emotion comes in, you have to breathe. And a lot of people don't breathe in the right place, <laughs> and that changes the story because that's your emotional link, is how you're breathing. So if it's choppy because you're breath breathing all the time, we're not going to get to the story. You can edit all those out, but we're going to tell that it's not really a true story. Right. And then going back to the marketing part, then you say, I have this, you know, okay, I need to set up a website. I need to, to connect with these talent agents. I need to record these other things. What can you do? What do you want to do? And everyone should have a different answer to that question. So don't feel like you should do it all in the beginning. Pick and choose what you're good at, but you got to understand what you are. And that's part of the throwing spaghetti on the wall process. Yeah. And then going, ah, I'm really good at the warm fuzzy things that are that so i'm going to really concentrate on hospitals yeah. and getting that warm fuzzy hospital sound yeah. you know and then it might be one that's more crazy and wacky so then you you do that but that's why what i do is i create characters for each of my my actors so these are the hats that we wear throughout the day they're characters and we all know when it's wrong when you answer the phone thinking it's someone uh i love you know like it says your partner but it ends up being your mother hi oh hi yeah, no, everything's good. You know, it's a different sound that you're going to have. So if you have the character of, of that that's more intimate, and then you have the one that's a little more businessy, and, you know, they're not like characters like, you know, like you're crazy. Right. But they're just the hats that we put on throughout our day. So, and that's where we, when we talk on the phone, we put those hats on all the time, and we change dramatically when we're talking on the phone. Our emotional verisimilitude is amazing. Yeah, it's amazing how some people seem to think that they need to be talking much louder on the phone when they're just in the same room with, like, 
you know, who are you talking to for crying out loud? Sometimes it, it's great to have the studio far away from that. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, we're talking with Elaine Clark, who joins us from the Bay Area. Had to, any smoke up there? Are you surviving all the... the well, smoke? we're surviving, but there's a lot, a lot of fires up here, and the, the air quality is terrible. I have to say that. Well, see, and it makes sense to wear a mask anyway. Mm -hmm. So anyway, if you've got a question for Elaine, uh, all you have to do is throw it in the chat room here in Facebook. Or if you're watching on YouTube, apparently there's a chat room there now, too. And Jeff Holman is sitting there going, which one do I watch? You there can is. Use... I, I didn't even realize it was activated. <laughs> I took a look at the control panel and there were people there. So now we got two places to post questions. And don't worry, we won't miss a thing. That's right. So post your questions wherever you feel most comfortable. Anyway. We're going to take a break right now, and uh, when we get back, we'll start looking at some questions. But we got more stuff to talk to uh, Elaine about. So uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back here at VoiceOver Body Shop. Don't go away. You're, You're watching, watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Look what you made me do. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. You know, to put it mildly, this year has been challenging. Some voiceover talent have struggled. Others have thrived. Now, if you're like me, you've worked from home since long before this virus showed up. But have you managed to truly master your home-based voiceover workflow? Are you easily slipping in front of the mic and efficiently turning out great work? Or are you struggling to get all your tools and systems running smoothly? Well, help is on the way. There's going to be a great new free VO Heroes course starting Saturday, August 29th called Mastering Home-Based Voiceover. And David H. Lawrence the 17th is going to teach it to you live online. You can get access to it and a reminder when it kicks off by going to voheroes.com forward slash 2020. That's voheroes.com forward slash 2020. No matter where you are on your VO journey, the free mastering home-based voiceover course will help you hone and refine your home-based workflow and help you move from struggling to thriving. Go to voheroes.com forward slash 2020. That's voheroes.com forward slash 2020. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're listening to Voice Over Body Shop, VOBS.TV. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on... All right. You know, right now, it's time to talk about our good friend Harlan Hogan. Well, maybe not so much Harlan himself, but voiceoveressentials.com, his website to ha that has everything you could possibly need to record voiceover at home, along with lots of other cool stuff, which we'll talk about in a second. But he wanted to let you know that... His Harlan Hogan Voice Optimized Headphones Signature Series 2.0 uh, are, are now available at the website, voiceoveressentials.com. They're great. They're comfortable. They've got, they, they're incredibly flexible. You can wear these for a long period of time. I was wearing them to edit something the other day, an hour and a half. Didn't even know I was wearing them. Plus, if you walk away, it, you don't wreck this thing. It just pops right out. These are great headphones. They have a very flat response, so you can listen to Bjork 
on these, but it's not going to be quite the same as listening, say, on a pair of other headphones that are made for music. These are optimized for voiceover. And Harlan wanted me to know, wanted me to let you know that uh, he's got copies of Elaine Clark's book. There's money where your mouth is. Elaine, are you in there somewhere? There she is. I am here. Show us that book. And he's got five autographed copies of this book. And if you order a pair of headphones, the first five people to order them will get a copy, a signed copy of those. You're good friends with Harlan, aren't you? Oh, um, Harlan and I go back way a long time ago. So we used to travel around and do uh, do workshops together. And so he would do the marketing and I would do the, the voiceover. We met tons of people in New York and Florida and Washington, D.C. It was it was great. Yeah, so, well, that's great. So my it, buddy. He, he's a great guy with a great company with great headphones and a lot of other stuff. So go over to voiceoveressentials.com. Actually, the best way, if you're on our homepage, you know, you know, I mean, you might be watching on Facebook, but if you're on our homepage, go to the bottom of the homepage, click on the picture of Harlan talking into his Portabooth Pro, and that will take you right to Voice Over Essentials, where you can order your signature series voice-optimized headphones. And if you're one of the first five, you get a copy of Elaine's book. There's money where your mouth is. Show the book again. There it is. All right. We'll be right what? back. <laughs> this is Anthony Mendez, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. And we're back with Elaine Clark. Ah, uh, uh, live TV. But anyway, uh, one of the things that you, you, you now you've written, there, there's money where your mouth is. And, and now it's now in its fourth edition. Tell us a little bit about what's, what's in there. Well, there are three sections in the book. The first part is about the, ba uh, about the basics. One of the things that I'm really big on is how to use punctuation to create change. Mm -hmm. so, um, so it's about how to break some of the patterns with your uh, even tempo. So you have different tempos, how to find keywords and use different word emphasis. And that tells a different story. The middle part of it then has ooh, like over 200 scripts in it with, uh, and then that's how you can learn how to apply, um, like lists are faster. How do you do those and have them stand out? Um, and then the last uh, section of the book is about marketing. So it's really divided into three sections. Ah. So that's, uh, so it's, it's good. Yeah. And available wherever fine voiceover books are sold, like voiceoveressentials.com. Mm -hmm. uh, now you've got another book that is coming out. And I wanted to talk about this for a little bit before we get to questions from our audience. By the way, if you want to have a question for, uh, for Elaine, throw it in the chat room. Jeff Holman's sitting in there going, let's get some questions for Elaine. It's great. It's easy. And we'll get to them. Get to them now. Don't write them an hour after we're done because then I won't be able to ask her. So it's just easy. Just go in the chat room. So you've written a book about podcasting. Now, this is a whole different subject, but what what's this book about as far as podcasting is concerned? Well, it's, uh, it has an amazing title, Voiceovers for Podcasting. So uh, part of it was my no. <laughs> <laughs> it's very clever. So uh, my publisher for, for the uh, There's Money Where Your Mouth Is just contacted me and said, hey, we talked to everyone and decided you were the one to write the book about podcasting. So then the next day they sent me a contract and an advance and there we go. So I wrote the book. Uh, so I did a ton of research. Yeah, um, did a ton of research and I also wrote the book that I wish I had. So that uh, I guess my brain works in a certain way that I like things very logical and, and patterns there. So I'm telling people, if you do this thing, here are the positive, if you do this, here are the, the negatives, here are the problems you're going to encounter along the way. And so that's just one chat, uh, one chapter is it tells you where the money's coming from and how you need to plan for that and how you can set up your, your system. And the, and the microphones are different, uh, the choices and maybe, uh, you guys can talk more about that than what you need for doing voiceovers for commercials and video games and narration. Uh, because a lot of people are doing that during their recordings on their kitchen table with bad ambiance, so uh, or room treatment. And it just, uh, so it's uh, lots and lots of really good uh, information from several uh, people who have podcastings. Uh, one that has over 6 million followers and how he created his business, other ones who are just starting and some of the problems that they're running into. So it's a combination of all sorts of things. So that's what, um, 
the yeah. voiceovers for podcasting takes you from soups to nuts. Yeah. So pod, so you're, you're saying that podcasting may be a very good place for a lot of voice people to go to. Yeah. But there's, you know, we're in the voiceover business and there's, there, there's, that's a niche business, but there are also niche businesses about, about fishing and very specific fish. And there are, you know, about, um, um, quilting. So there are all these different topics that if you are a, uh, if you're really fond of something, it could become a podcast that you're not just talking about voiceovers. You're talking about the things, your passion, your love, your, you know, your hobby on the side. So that's, that's how you can use it. Yeah. It's also uh, the way I see, see voiceovers. It's really a communication skill that goes across the board with every form of communication, personal and business. Yeah. See, see, to me, podcasting, as when I was a public service director on radio, that's what podcasting was. You mm -hmm. There'd be an intro, you'd have an interview with somebody, and you'd put, this has been, you know, whatever it is, you know, and it would go on at 5.30 on a Saturday morning. But that's what podcasting is. It was a total democratization of people being able to express themselves and do their own public service programs and then promote them to their friends. And if it was good... It, it can spread out. I think it's probably better than doing these you know, public service programs. But if you're going to do a podcast, you better have something to say. I like I like to say that, you know, if uh, you know, if it, there are a lot of anybody can do a podcast, it doesn't mean everybody should do a podcast. You know, you've got to have something to say. And like you said, well, there's a lot of topics there. And I think a lot of people. Uh, one of the troubles with podcasting is a lot of people get into it and then they realize it, there's a commitment. You have to do some research. You have to prep it. Maybe you have to add your music and effects and editing time and other stuff. And then they go like, whoa, I don't know, have time for that. So there are a lot of um, podcasts that just only have like three to five episodes and then they're done. Pod and fade. They just, just, yeah. Pod so fade. So that's huge. <laughs> and so a lot of the, the ones that, that allow you to upload it then say you have to have 10 or 20 in the in the can before we'll even accept it so that we make sure that it's there. And then there are ways of dealing with pod fade so that you don't lose your audience. But they, you know, the, I'm sure that a lot of people out there also are starting to record for various podcasts too, whether it's the intros and outro, outros or whether it's uh, the, um, uh, sometimes it's a storyteller in the middle of how this, either this mystery or this book or whatever that they're, that they're reading as part of it. So there's tons of, Tons of work beyond just your typical commercial and uh, and narration. And this is where you can decide whether you like something and you want to go down a certain avenue, or it's like something that, that doesn't um, rock your boat. Really? You know, I think I actually have a, a podcast intro demo that, really? <laughs> that I did. Yeah, it's like... You know, and and it was it, it turned out pretty good. And mm -hmm. you know, and and whenever I produce a podcast, of course, I do all the intros. It's like, mm -hmm. Why well, you gonna hire somebody else? I'm producing the darn thing. So, because I'm I'm working on like four or five different podcasts, including this one. So, if you're listening to this as a podcast, this is what a podcast is supposed to sound like. <laughs> or, or hopefully, is that right, George? Does this sound like a podcast to you? <laughs> I hope so. I mean, God, there's so many things about what a podcast can sound like. Some of it sounds like traditional radio. Some of it sounds like just a conversation in a living room, <laughs> and everything in between. You so know, this are... show is a TV show first, podcast second, but we want it to sound as much like a podcast as we can. Um, it's yeah, it's interesting. This show is, is we try to really blend the two together um so yeah it's if you can do both and pull it off i think it's pretty effective yeah and we've only been doing it for nine and a half years so maybe we're doing something right i guess it's working it, but yeah, yeah and the and the difference is you know when it's a vidcast versus um an audio podcast is how to take someone on an auditory journey that's right. different when that than when they can see us so mm -hmm. i was uh i was in morocco last year and there was a podcaster there who was on our on our trip and she was one of the guides. And so she was interviewing people and, and she would just walk up to someone and just say, you know, here I am with the sounds of the, of the, the street going by. And here's a person who's walking by wearing this kind of outfit. And let me just stop them. And then they would talk and I was just so amazed. And she would get these amazing you know, um, interviews with people just by walking up to them. We were riding camels mm. and she's then talking to the guys who were feeding the camels. And it's like, that doesn't <laughs> happen every day. And, I, I, and don't ride a camel every day. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. I want to ask you now something technical. Yeah. Because you do have engineering. Over all these years, you've had to do a lot of engineering stuff. You're setting up your studio at home. What are you centering your production studio around? What are the key elements in your studio that you're using? Um, well, I, I have non-technical answers to technical questions. That's fine. So, that's, that's fine. So go for it. That's what we have for. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, I have um, a, a very large uh, double-paned uh, Whisper Quiet booth. That's where I'm mm -hmm. standing in. So that's why you see that. This is just one side of it. So it's about the size of four people's individual booths. So that's- um, That helps, boy. It's, I like having the extra space, but I got it because of my production when I was doing some ADR or some looping. So I needed it for that kind of kind of work to have multiple people when you could have multiple people in a space. Mm -hmm. So um, I, have, uh, I have a millennia, which is, uh, that's my saving grace. That's my, my thing that I love the most because I, I can push a button and it sounds like a tube mic. I can uh, just do little tweaks because I'm not a huge, I mean, I did never study engineering. I do it by ear. Yeah. So I'm ear trained. And then this is uh, my microphone. If I put it, put my hand behind, this, this is a uh, Jay-Z black hole uh, oh, yeah. microphone. Oh, so, nice. and it has a little tiny pop filter that I really like the, the size of that and the way that my hands can make it show up very well. But I like the realness of it. It has little crystals on it that make it just sound very real. Right now, I'm talking through a Logitech video cam right now. Put your hand directly behind the mic, all the way at the top, so they can literally see. Yeah, you see how you can see her hand right through the, the hole in the mic. It does have yeah. a hole in it. <laughs> yeah, this is the black hole. Yeah. So I was I was directing someone in a, in a job, and I said, uh, just go on the uh, the Jay Z, and they were friends with. Uh, with Jay Z, and I went, Oh my God, took a picture of two of us, sent it to Jay Z. I said, No, it's really not his. Wow. Yes. <laughs> it was, it's, it's a company in Latvia. So, um, <laughs> so that's, that's sort of my, and then I have a lot of um, monster cables mm -hmm. because that's one of my clients. And then every time I would record for them, they would bring me boxes of monster cables. You know, they're really good. Uh, one so I, and it's amazing the difference with good cables amazing you never have to replace one no and it's good if you work in a place that maybe you know the ones that have kind of chains on it around it if, if people have uh working in a basement or somewhere they might have rodent issues you know mm. it's, it protects against that where some of the other ones can be eaten through i'm sure that was a lovely thing to talk about um <laughs> and then i have a few other you know, what software uh, do you what software do you I use, use on logic. a regular basis logic. I use logic but i have it tricked out so that I have, so, uh, cause I do a lot of uh, demo production and recording projects. I was just working on a video game a couple of weeks ago and I do, do tons of e-learning. So when they want me to mix the whole thing together, uh, sometimes I just send them the files and they do. And other times I do the whole, you know, soup to nuts. Um, so, uh -huh. so then I have the tracks for music that, and I have ones that if, if I bring in a talent and they have a soft voice, I already have it kind of preset to boost their voice. And if, this, if someone is, is yeah. very plosive, I have another preset line so I can just move their files to that without having to do a lot of tweaking. I mean, a little bit, but that's oh, so your tracks that you preset created, with a lot of different chains. Yeah. So that way I can just move it from one thing to the next. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Important to note though, that you know how to do all this stuff. Having yeah. it is not the same as, you know, that doesn't mean anything, but you've been doing this for years and you understand the process and yeah. you didn't learn how to do all this stuff overnight. No, I screwed up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's why you send something you think is beautifully edited, but you realize that you had still the outtake still attached to it, but it wasn't <laughs> showing. And then they go, what is this? I heard someone walking in and then coughed and then they went to the mic and there was a loud sound like they were adjusting. You're like, oh no. But on my computer, that wasn't there anymore. Oh, I yeah. guess that, you know, so those are like the early, early years of doing that. Um, yeah. Anyway, so it's, but you. one of the things to know about, about engineering, this is why you guys are so important, is that you can be a good engineer for your own work or someone else's with the creative side. But I, I always hire someone to set it up for me and tweak it out because that's not where I'm good. I, I'm better once it's there saying, here's the problem, here's this. And then if there's a sound, so to get, to get it notched out based on that space. But I, uh, I could hit and miss it 
but if you hire someone who knows what they're doing, like you guys, then you can actually set it up for that space. And that's where it's going to be unique to each individual place. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. That's Engineering and tech, tech design or acoustic design, they're all relative. They're, they're all related to each other. And there's people that can do them all. But mainly engineers are really good at, they have really great ears and great at producing a great recording. Maybe not, they, they don't necessarily have experience in training and teching, like figuring out why it's not working or what, why is there a glitch? Things like that. Right. So, yeah. That's totally great. agree. I felt so much better when I found out that I didn't have to know all of that. I could hire yeah. someone and right. then I can do the part that I am good at because right. I just, I'm more ear trained. I just have been, a, been in the studios, you know, for 40 years. So it's, you just, you know, what works and what doesn't. Sure. And, uh, and I think the main thing for people to take away is tempo. Tempo changes. Hmm. Got to do those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Once again, we're talking with Elaine Clark. We got a bunch of questions from our vast worldwide audience. Are you ready to take some of those? Only if it's worldwide. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, I, I, I know there's at least one here probably from Indiana. Uh, anyway, George, take those. Uh, the first one's from Enigma Voices featuring April What's Watts. Oh, okay, a nice, nice little spot there, April. Okay. Well done. I'm very impressed. Um, she says, how long did it take you before you got comfortable with finding your true voice? Oh, that's a really good question. Oh, I'd say five years just off the bat. So one of the things that happens is that we're so visual. And I kept, people kept saying, oh, you have great diction. But then when I heard myself at a, at a job, I had terrible diction. I was leaving off the consonants and, you know, the ending sounds. And so I, I worked on that. And then I lowered my pitch a little bit through some exercises, vocal exercises, because I just, you know, starting out in your early 20s, it's just a little bit higher and a little bit brighter. And that was actually what I call myself, light and bright. You know, and there's just only so so long that you can do that before people just go, please just chill, chill a little bit. So and then your ears start liking the parts you like or uh, rather than just going, Ugh, that's me. But we're used to hearing our voice rattling around in our head, not on the outside when we hear it back. Also, your speakers make a big difference. Your headphones make a big difference. So, you know, all those things, when you start improving your booth, you're going to, and your equipment, you're going to hear the things that make you sound better, but don't go out and spend tons and tons and tons of money on stuff before you can justify it too. So a lot of people just go out and buy very expensive stuff and then they don't have clients and they're like, Oh no, now I don't have money to learn how to do this. Yeah. Over investing in the gear way too early in the game can, can hurt you in the long run. If you can't then use that, the money you spent for proper training for sure. Oh, let's see. Should I do the one from Thomas? Sure, why not? Our buddy Thomas. Uh, is there a correct or incorrect breathing method, <sighs> such as through the nose or never closing the mouth, lips, <laughs> whatever? What, what thoughts do you have on that? Well, what you want to do is talk on the breath. And that's why if you put a little bit of air out first and then talk on, just like, just barely any, just, and then you, you're talking on it. Rather than going and then talking, you're going to run out of air immediately. But this is where my, my app, Activate Your Voice, works on your breath support. You have to sustain sounds for 10 to 12 seconds. It works on how, if you do that and how you get louder at the end of a phrase or a sentence or a word, rather than getting softer, because we like to just fade away. And, yeah. you know, uh, and learning how to play the notes that way or resonators, articulators. So that's where this big 99 cent app, Activate your voice will help you with that. So everything I do is really to help people through problems that I had that I see are universal. So that's why I like that adding, uh, adding melody is about how do you change your tempo? How do you add focus to certain words? And, uh, and that's only like $9.99 for that one. So people can find those in the app store under my name, or you can go to my website, elaineclarkvo.com. But that's, it's about fixing it and doing something that will get you to the end result that uh, uh, and moving your hands, gesturing the right way, you know, like following a, a, a phrase rather than imploding. That's why every time you close your lips, there's going to be a noise when you open up, open up your mouth. So if you talk here and then you, then you use another gesture and then another gesture and another gesture, then you're going to get to that natural place where you would breathe because you're not talking to people. Well, how are you? I think that's great. 
what, what about this? But when people oh. see the punctuation, that's yeah. what they do. I keep saying, you're kissing everyone. <laughs> Quit doing that. <laughs> I'm always editing that out of my YouTube videos. I'm like, no, why did I do that? And, I, and we're all going to make those errors from time to time. But if you can minimize it, that's that's really good. Yeah. And there's lots of ways to do that, too. I mean, all sorts of different ways. I also recommend that people be in good physical shape because you should be able to read an entire sentence without taking a breath. Unless it's an incredibly badly written run-on sentence. Which... And I've had some that have been three pages long. So <laughs> I needed to breathe in that one. <laughs> Next question. Uh, let's see. Here. Benji. Benji. Menji. Menji speaks. Says, what advice can you give for actors with little to no business marketing experience? Mm. Well, I think that there are lots of things like this that you can watch. Um, see who the, the people are that you like, or just put in some, some uh, you know, do some Google searches and say, oh, I like how they're doing this. I like how they're doing that. And then it's just borrowing an idea. It's like, it, you don't have to reinvent it. So you just have to say, I don't like that way of marketing because it just makes me feel uncomfortable, but I do like the way this other person seems to be marketing. So whether it's through a website and the, the verbiage that they use, or whether it's, um, you know, if they're going to be on pay to play sites, if they're going through talent agents, how do you want to market yourself? And one of the things I did in the early days is that I sent a Clark bar, uh, along with my demo to the oh, producers clever. or I walked them around. And so, and, and I did that for maybe the first five years and then people still remember me for the Clark bar. So, and I haven't handed one of those out because first of all, people don't really like unsolicited food coming to their house anymore. Mm, yeah, probably not. Yeah. Yeah. And I also realized that you shouldn't put a candy bar in the mail in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that one the wrong way too. It was a little melty. I always wanted to send out Whitman samplers, but then everybody would yeah. be mispronouncing my name. So I said, forget oh. that. It wouldn't. Oh, I, 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 uh. <laughs> I remember a promotion when I was in radio, somebody who was starting a cloth diaper service and they sent us a, a, a sample of the cloth diaper with Hershey's Kisses in it, oh. which mm -hmm. I thought was... Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. oh, gosh. That's, that's, that's oh, clever. Man. Yeah. Clever, but kind of disgusting. It, yeah. Well, you were asking <laughs> if we are a worldwide audience. So the, hopefully this counts. Uh, okay. This question's from Nikki Flo in Chile. Well, that's and worldwide. That that's pretty right. far. Um, question is, is, is your book available on Kindle or any yes. electronic thing? It is. You can download it, uh, both of the books. Um, well, not yet, uh, for this, the new one, but, uh, yes, you can, you can put it on Kindle or you can get a hard copy. And I love Chile and I've been to, I've been rafting on the Pudalapu River. Ooh. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Chile is a beautiful country. Isn't it? Oh. It's just weird when you're driving east. And you suddenly realize the sun's on the wrong side. <laughs> wait, wait. Oh, that's right. I'm on south of the equator. Makes right. me realize I've never been south of the equator. Oh, you have to do that. You well, now's not the time to travel, but when you <laughs> yeah. can. Yeah. 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 It's really yeah. Cool. And it's not even spring there yet. Um, question here. This, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Jay. this one I didn't see who it's from. It just says, Elaine, what would be the most common roadblock you have seen with talent? who have gotten over the initial surge of passion <laughs> and now they're trying to keep the momentum up. <laughs> I think that that happens to everybody. Yeah. Um, taking breaks, you know, is, is also really good. Um, you have to, I think, write down on a piece of paper what you really want out of this business and don't make it money. I mean, because that's why we're, we are doing this for money. But if you say, I want to make a million dollars, you know, and that's all you have on that sheet of paper, chances are you're not going to do it. But if you say, I want to make, I want to really help people and in this particular area, I want to, to be creative. I want to have fun um, playing around with, with toy voices. I want these things. And then it sort of jazzes you and reminds you of what you really wanted to do because we can easily lose um, well, you know, lose our fire. Yeah. And I think that that's also sometimes taking a day off and then saying it's okay to recharge your batteries. It's fine because sometimes we just push ourselves too much. Yeah. There are a lot of people out there like, I got to do it. And they're like doing 50 auditions a day. 
and then you know they burn out very quickly at that you know it's yeah because it, there's it's uh you it's about what is your quality of life that you want and your relationships in your own life and how do you put this in with it you have to think of it as a as a job just like any other job it just has to be a fun and different job that might be in your closet so <laughs> that <laughs> good good point. Uh, that you can there you take off time from work uh, I know that when I first started, I was so afraid of taking a vacation because every time you take a vacation, that's when the job comes in. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then after a while you go, I bet I have to. And at the end of the uh, end of your life, you're going to say, what do I remember that job or is that that vacation I did with so-and-so? It's yeah. usually the vacation. So unless it's just an amazing job I and mean, probably your amazing jobs are going to be a handful of them or maybe five of like, Oh my God, I got to work with so-and-so. This was such a great experience. This was, um, so I remember the ones that went terribly wrong and the ones that I worked with amazing people, but the ones that were just, that went like clockwork that you, you did it and it was good and everyone liked it. It just becomes a pile of, you know, of jobs. And one of the things with me cleaning out my office and just uh, organizing stuff, I have so many files of jobs that I've done. I'm going back and reliving them. So it's like, oh yeah, so and so we did that job. That was so great. And here's another piece of paper because this is I started in the paper time, and I don't have a problem with that because I grew up in a pulpwood town in Louisiana. So they were making paper, so they were growing the pine trees. So I'm helping my hometown. So when I, <laughs> when I print something, so. <laughs> yeah. Here's uh, David Lee Haas podcast he says, question. Yeah. Yeah. When being interviewed for a podcast, how can I sound more exciting? Like I still want to be me, mm -hmm. but a tip just to sound more interesting. Yeah. I think That's that most one. people want to be interest, uh, want to try to be interesting, but rather than interested. So if you really want to know what the other person is saying and you listen, I think that we have a hard time listening. It's yeah. because we want to be more active. And when you hear what the other person is doing and it gets you jazzed, that's how you can be more interesting. You know, there are other things that you can do just to get yourself ready. It's like jumping up and down, laughing, you know, uh, doing some exercises so that your blood is circulating and your body feels alive. Or stand than, and not sit. <laughs> right. That's, that's very true, too. So you have to figure out what works for you and what, what doesn't. It depends on the... The, um, on what the, the content is. And if you're not, the, well, actually, let me go back to so the people I was interviewing for um, that are podcasters that are highly successful, that I said they only pick um, subjects that interest them. So first of all, they, they say this, I'm so curious about how do you do this, rather than here we are again with blah, 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 da, 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 this is it. But instead, like, well, how does how do you deal with this this thing? I don't know. This is, so it's all a, a discovery, and a way that's helping you learn more. You just need to listen to some old reruns of Hugh Hauser. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hugh Hauser. Yeah. Hauser. <laughs> well, that's amazing. That's look. This is beautiful. <laughs> listen to how that guy is interested in everything. Yeah. Um, is this our last question, Dan? Last question from J. Horace Black. He says, hello, Elaine, I'm looking at your app in the app store. Will you explain how this works and how one can effectively use this? Loving your wisdom. Keep pouring it on. Okay. Well, uh, I guess he's talking about the, well, I'll, I'll go through each of them just real, real easily. So yes, there are more than one. Yeah. There are two, two, that would be more than one. So the first one is uh, the activate your voice one that looks like. All the light. There we go. See it. You see, you see that I have my little circle lights now. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> so with that one, it's about uh, increasing your volume. So if it's starting out, I think I have my volume down on this. But if it's starting out with a, mm, and it's going to get louder, and then as soon as you get to like ten or twelve seconds, you have to get a breath, and then it's going to go to the next one, mm, and you try to get louder. And then you go on to the next, the L, and that's just part of the, the, the resonators and then going into the, the mm sound. So you're, um, and then- it Trains uh, you to keep the energy of the volume intensity even throughout. Even, if you think louder at the end, it becomes even. 
Mm -hmm. And so you're actually using more stomach muscles. And then when you get to the articulators, you're doing ta 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 ba 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 ga 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 et cetera, et cetera. And then I just wrote a little um, uh, uh, thing for enunciation. I always create things from scratch. I don't take it for anything. I just sort of go, why? I'll just make it up myself. So I just wrote this thing about how much curry can a great chef add. So you put your teeth together, how much curry? So it teaches you all the syllables. And I find that it's very hygienic if you just put your teeth together rather than putting your finger in your mouth, a cork in your mouth, a pencil, a pen. And you always, I mean, well, some people take their teeth out. That might be hard, but <laughs> most people have them in. And so if you do, just use that. And then when you open your mouth, it's, it, it just, you know, your mouth springs open and you have more of an oval sound rather than a lateral sound. So that's really helpful. And then the other one that is adding melody to your voice that looks like this. Um, that one, uh, there's a video. That, Musicality. Um, so I would suggest uh, watching that first. It has a word emphasis chart. Let me see if you can see that. Um, and that's also in the book. And then you have a place, a part that he probably is curious about how do you use it. After you've watched, after you watch the video, then it's about how do you use those gestures. So then uh, what I did is I'm just going to click on one of these, if I can do it backwards. Um, so if I click on it, it opens up to a bigger place and then I can record myself. And so it's about hitting, doing a dot on the word insurance. Who does insurance best? Then I can go back and listen to myself. Who does insurance best? And then I'll listen to my examples. Who does insurance best? Or who does insurance best? Oh. Then, then if I don't want it, I can delete it. I just turn it and I can delete that and record again. And so I have 21 exercises, and then it has a little check mark when I've worked on those. Ah. So that's it. Yeah. And those um, are available in the App Store. In the App Store. So yeah. it's um, because what I work on is like when you're given direction, how do you take that intellectual direction and put it in your body? Amazing. Because there's a huge disconnect in what we do. So, uh, and we have, and when we talk in real life, we're always gesturing and moving, but people think when I say gestures that I'm just flailing away, that's not the case at all. It's about how do you put a little emphasis? And I had someone who emailed me this week and it was so sweet. He said one section in the book, he said, he started trying it as you change your focus word and the different emphasis on how you're doing it in a sentence, you're telling a whole nother story. And we know that with the, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Those are three different stories. Right. Yeah. And we so love, we're going to yeah. do and, the same thing. Yeah. And we love you, Elaine. Thanks so I much. I love you. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's so great to see you again. And uh, we really appreciate you coming on. Once again, the books are There's Money Where Your Mouth Is. And your new book, when's the new one coming out? Uh, in October, voiceovers for podcasting. All right. Very good. Elaine Clark, everybody. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you, George. All righty. We'll be, yeah, we'll be right back and wrap things up right after these important messages. Hi, this, Hi, is, this is Bill, Bill Farmer, Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control, and it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. This is Anthony Mendez, and you're watching Voice Over Body Show. 
Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Well, it's that time of the show where we thank our longtime sponsors, Source Elements, and they create all kinds of stuff, but the thing you're probably most concerned with as a voiceover actor or producer would definitely be Source Connect, and their software technology has been in regular use in the voiceover business way more than 12 years. I mean, I've been dealing with them at least personally for over 12 years. I've set up studios that use it countless times, systems that integrate, integrate it into production. And it's just because this thing has been around for a very long time. It is now has a very strong foothold in the voiceover production world. What does it do? It lets you work from home or really anywhere where you've got a quiet, good sounding studio, controlled environment and good acoustics and allows you to connect to a studio as though you're on the other end of a thousand mile long microphone cable. It sounds that good. It's almost indistinguishable from being in the same place. And uh, that's what allows studio producers to record you, capture that audio immediately, have it in the production flow and have the clients who are probably listening in on something else like Zoom or who the heck knows, listening in on the session and making sure that they're getting what they want out of the session. So it's it's a very efficient tool and it's one you need to have in your quiver of weapons. So make sure you have Source Connect. Get yourself dialed in with at least a trial so you understand how it works and you know you can use it at source-elements.com and get up and running. If you need help, go to georgethetech.com slash SC for some tech support and startup videos to get you rolling. Thanks again, Source Elements. We'll be right back to wrap this up right after this. This is, this is Anthony, Anthony Mendez. Mendez. You're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. And we're back to say goodbye for the time being. Uh, next week on this very show, Tech Talk number 40. 40. The big 4 0. Big we are four. finally over the hill. We are. Well, when we hit 52, then we know we've been doing it for over a year, for almost two years. <laughs> anyway, that's coming up next uh, live. But uh, who are our donors of the week? Yes, we have donors. George Whittem, starting off the top of the list this week, my dad. Thanks, dad. <laughs> Natasha Marshuka or Marshevka? Marchevka. Marchev <laughs> with, a, with a soft, it's a W with a soft. Like it's, a Marchevka. It's a V. Right? Yeah. Not Chevka? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, right. Natasha. <laughs> no, no need to be sorry. I'm just an idiot. Uh, Thomas Pinto, uh, Trey Mosley, Philip Sapir, Paul Pape, Christopher Epperson, Michelle Blanker, Antland Productions, that's Uncle Roy, and Graham Spicer. Thank you, everybody, for your donations. Most of these names, I think almost all of those you've heard before because many of them, many of them subscribe. Yep. Um, so it's uh, something you can do if you like to contribute to the show ongoingly. If you like having your name read each week, <laughs> then subscribe. All righty. Uh, we also need to thank our amazing sponsors who are with us week after week, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials, VoiceOver Extra, Source Elements, VOHeroes.com, VoiceActorWebsites.com, and JMC Demos. All righty. Uh, Jeff Holman, great job in the chat room tonight, throwing us all those great questions uh, on Facebook and... Uh, and YouTube. And, and YouTube, apparently. <laughs> Our technical director, Sue Merlino, who's actually back in the studio, masked and gloved 
and in scrubs and a, you know, just trying to keep scuba, everybody scuba, safe. Scuba, scuba right. outfit. Doing a fabulous job. <laughs> and Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, this isn't the easiest business around, but we're here to help you out uh, because George and I know if it sounds good. It is good. All right. That's going to do it for us. Tech Talk coming up next. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. BS. Have a great week, everybody.